To say that I was excited for Echoes of Wisdom would probably have been an understatement. What isn't an understatement is how much I am pulling off this dress. And if I say that, it makes it seem like it might be true. <laughs> I figured if Harry Styles can wear a dress, I could try it. I just got done with a 13 hour straight stream of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. And I gotta tell you, I could have kept playing. The only reason I stopped is because at some point I have to sleep, but I also knew I wanted to record this video before I spawned my bed and laid down to regain health so that I could get back to it as soon as possible. I'm gonna give you my my first impressions now and then do a bigger deep dive review later on on why I feel like this game works so well the way that it is. I feel like trailers give things away way too much these days and we got several deep dive five to six minute trailers on gameplay mechanics and parts and worlds and areas in this game. So by the time I finally got to it, there wasn't much left to the imagination. This isn't a Tears of the Kingdom situation where we all started playing and then we found down the depths below and realized how much game there is here that wasn't revealed to us. The best way I can describe it, the Link's Awakening remake kind of mixed with Link Between Worlds and dialed up to 11 and giving you the ability to create whatever you want to solve any puzzle the way you want. It reminded me of previous Zelda games like Minish Cap that were developed by other teams. Like in that case, it was Capcom. And it was a Zelda. I mean, you were playing as Link and you were trying to save the princess, but at the same time, something just felt a little off. Like somebody else made the game and not Nintendo. And that's what this feels like. It feels a little off because it's not made by Nintendo. So Grezzo or Grezza, Grezzo, the company that has been helping Nintendo with their remakes recently developed this game. They did Ocarina of Time 3D. They also did Link's Awakening. In the case of Link's Awakening, they created a whole new visual style for it, but they didn't really do any developing themselves on those games. The developing was already done. And that's why this game, directed by somebody who isn't Anuma, somebody different, although Anuma is producing, feels a little different. But again, in a good way, because it's still a ton of fun. There could be another reason for that, where this game actually actually started as a Zelda dungeon maker, but then Anuma was playtesting this game that Grezzo was making and realized it's actually really fun to walk around spawning things in and placing enemies here and placing this object here. But what if rather than the player has to also design the entire map, we create puzzles, we create worlds and levels, and we allow the player to interact with them like a dungeon maker and solve the puzzles the way they want. And this game, let me tell you, feels like Tears of the Kingdom Mini. Even down to the UI and the map and the waypoint markers. But on top of that, you have this more traditional 2D Zelda that we've had before, but for the first time with this added element of do it your way. If you remember my big ass review that took an hour to, to watch, cheating is fun. I said that in the video at the very end of it for my editor, who's trying to find the part of me saying that. It's right here. Because sometimes... Cheating is fun. And that has carried over into this game too. Cheating truly is fun. So many puzzles and dungeons and areas that look significantly different to other areas I've been, I've just solved the same way by spawning a flying tile and riding it to victory. And I gotta tell you, it's as rewarding as it is in Tears of the Kingdom when I also manipulate and do that game however I wanna do it. So I don't wanna go into any specific story spoilers or anything like that. Again, I'll save it for the actual review. None of that really matters here for the first impressions. All you're probably really here for is, hey, Wood, what's the game like? And no, really, why are you in a dress? And I gotta tell you, it feels pretty nice. I don't know if I was a girl, not that, I, not that I have to be, but if I was, I would wear a dress all the time. I always wear jeans, like these restrictive, tight, washed jeans with a belt. And after I eat, I sit down and I feel the belt pressing. I'm not wearing anything. This is awesome. I feel like a, like a summer girly. <laughs> the game isn't as open-ended as Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild. You can't immediately run to the end boss and defeat it, but you are given some freedom in that way. When the game begins, two big rifts open up, one on the east and one on the west, and you can decide which one you want to head to first. Or you could also 
just ignore them for a while and explore the rest of the map if you want. That said, at some point, if you want to progress the game, you are going to have to go to one of those two goals and then start doing the dungeons. And yes, this game has dungeons. It's Tears of the Kingdom Breath of the Wild if it has dungeons, which is what so many of you were screaming about for so long. So... If you don't buy this game now, you're really a hypocrite. I guess now is a good time to talk about my only real complaint with the game. The UI of summoning things. I swear to God, Nintendo or Grezzo or whoever, two things I want to ask you right now. One, did any of you actually try playing this game when you were making it, especially in late game? Because I don't believe for a second a single one of you did and thought this works. On top of that, my second question, did none of you play Tears of the Kingdom and have the exact same issue with the UI and the menus when you're trying to use a bow or a sword or attach something to this or throw something here and do this and that. The menus were such a nightmare and it was one of the biggest complaints everybody had about Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. And you somehow did something even worse in this game. When you clone something, it goes into your big scrolling category here. And the more things you clone, the longer this scrolling category becomes. And at this point in the game, 13 hours in, I probably cloned at least 100 things. And when I want to find thing 99, you you better believe it's like opening a dictionary blind and trying to find the word for hell. There's no way of like picking favorites, of binding it to a separate key. The only thing you can do is freeze the game, bring up this whole scroll bar, and then sort it by things like recently used, recently cloned, most used, type. But it's still a pain and you still have to go through everything. I, I usually always want to find a bed or a trampoline or a sea urchin, sea urchin, sea urchin. Sorry, I'm getting flashbacks to playing the game today. I mean, that's the only way I found of actually utilizing this and finding anything here I actually want. And that does theoretically work. The only issue with that is it limits my experimentation. And I'm big on experimenting. I wore a dress today for the first time. I'm just in the mood. There's like 80 other things behind here that I haven't used recently recently or used a lot, and I kind of just end up collecting them and then forgetting that I have them. On top of that, I've really, at this point in the game, 10 plus hours in, taking to just avoiding enemies wherever possible. At first, it was really fun experimenting with what enemy would do what to what enemy. But as the game progressed, and I had to deal with this menu every five seconds, I got to the point where if I saw a couple of bats or a couple of enemies in my path, I would much rather just ignore them. I mean, I'm not going to get any XP for them, and I don't necessarily need the rupee they might drop. And again, this is really only an issue that spawned out of this menu. My suggestion on this is just create like a radial wheel like we have in Tears of the Kingdom and allow me to map certain things to the wheel of my preference. This would still limit my creativity because I'd probably lean into the wheel more than going into the scroll bar, but it would be quicker. Someone in chat suggested that they do rows rather than categories that you can switch from. When you bring up that menu, you just have all the enemies and then you have all the items and then you have whatever else. And that would also help just break up the sea of things because because one thing I wasn't sure about, how many things could you clone or have cloned that you could clone at any given time? And it's just all of it, which is actually really nice. I just wish they found a better way to implement that as far as in practical use of it. That is my absolutely only complaint though, because other than that, the gameplay is really fun. If I could describe this game in one word, it would probably be cute, actually. It's a very cutesy game. The characters are all really sweet. The little storylines of the characters you meet along the way are just adorable. You know in an anime where, like, a lot of story elements come together into this one moment and it makes you appreciate the character a lot more? For example, there's this Goron that you meet. He's the chief of the town and he keeps quoting these nuggets of wisdom this, nuggets of wisdom that, to the point where it gets really on your nerves, but these nuggets of wisdom apparently came from his father before he passed on. And then there's just this one cutscene where he realizes that he doesn't need this tablet. He has this whole moment and it's just, it's just very sweet. The fact that you can do whatever you want does lead to a lot of cheesing. And for the first several hours of the game, I thought it was going to be a absolute piss walk. I was having no issue with a single enemy. I was having any issue with platforming. I wasn't having any 
any issue with any boss fights. But I will say without getting too many spoilers, I started dying a lot more frequently towards the last four or five hours of my gameplay. Whether that was to platforming that they made a lot more challenging or some actual boss fights stepping up to the challenge, I was having a lot more fun with the difficulty as it went on. And I was actually impressed on how the difficulty ramped up. The pacing is really nice. You're not stuck in any one place too long. I found a ton of NPCs and cute little towns and areas to visit. There's not only the big dungeons, but there's a lot of little side dungeons and nooks and crannies around the world to explore. This is very much Tears of the Kingdom mini. If you were to ask me if it's worth it, I'd say heck yeah. Heck yeah, my guy. It's a Zelda game for one. I just played it for 13 hours straight and had fun the entire time, except one time where there was a pillar and I had no idea how to reach it. And I think it was because I accidentally didn't clone something I was supposed to, but with a little bit of creativity and ingenuity and luck and skill, I managed to do it. There's other moments where like, I'm trying to get a creature to drop a bomb and I'm just literally screaming at it to drop the bomb and I just wish I could drop the bomb. There are other times where I'm spawning a creature to attack an enemy and I'm just blue in the face, yelling at my creature to please pokey battle and attack before you get hit and die and I have to resummon you. Other than those moments, I had a ton of fun. I look forward to finishing the game, and I'm actually glad it's not crazy long. It's just the right amount of time. I definitely think it's worth the price. This game gives you so much freedom in how you complete the game, while still giving you a traditional, linear, dungeon-focused Zelda experience. It really is a great blend of old Zelda and the new style of Zelda. It might actually see a lot of the fans of Zelda who didn't really like Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom really really enjoying this game. And on the other side, people who really liked Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild, enjoying that they can play one of the more traditional Zeldas in that style. It's a really interesting hybrid and possibly a win-win for all Zelda fans of all shapes, kinds, and sizes. I know I went on a lot about the UI, but that's just what was on my mind because I spent so much time being frustrated by it. But I can't stress enough the overall cutesy charm, whimsical nature, old school dungeons, fun level design and the creativity to do whatever you want has really been peasing my little Zelda gooblu gobble brain the whole time I've been playing it and I've been having so much fun despite dealing with yet another clunky Nintendo Zelda UI system. As of right now, I'll say that I really recommend it, but uh, that could change. Watch my full review, maybe I'll change my mind. <laughs> I probably won't, but I just wanna give you a reason to watch my full review. I'm gonna go to bed now <laughs> because I gotta get up early tomorrow and finish the game live on stream, but I hope you enjoyed this. Really quickly, a couple of things, one, I have a new channel called Reactum Ups. It's an old school YouTube type channel. I'm doing YouTube like it used to be. Just a guy talking to a camera. I, I wanted a place to be creative and do something other than Nintendo all the time. So there's a couple of PlayStation things over there right now you can go and check out if you want. And by the way, I wore a dress for this. So the least you could do is like, comment and subscribe for me, please. For the love of God, my dignity is out the window. No, I'm kidding. I'm not, actually, I'm fine. I feel more dignified. I feel, I feel slay. <laughs> I'm so tired. I don't know what I'm doing. All right. Let me know if you like the game down below and I'll uh, see you next time. You know? All right.